Here's your red meat, ladies and gentlemen. Here's where you can tear me apart every single week. You know you got to go out there and let me hear it for these sell-high candidates. Let's recap what we talked about last week. We had Deonta Foreman, clear sell-high guy. We were saying, yeah, you love the workload last week, but this was going to be one of the worst offenses in the NFL going forward. With Roshan coming back in, it was going to be a running back by committee. Deonta Foreman wouldn't be able to overcome a running back by committee in horrendous offense. Now Foreman does nothing this past week. Can no longer sell him high. You missed your chance. I'd say the same thing with Cam Akers. I mean, I mean with Akers, yeah, he's going out there, scoring touchdowns, yada, yada, yada. I think people are realizing now, okay, Alexander Madison's still playing the vast majority of snaps. Probably not going to be able to get anything for Cam Akers or Alexander Madison. The Brian Robinson was that other running back that we were talking about, saying that the usage was going downwards, and he was just surviving off of touchdown efficiency, which we know is very hard to project out, especially when you're in an offense as bad as Washington. Doubt you can sell him anymore. Darren Waller, we were talking about just the proneness of Waller to seeing injuries. He was coming off a massive week against Washington. We were saying it was more so based off the matchup than anything. And yeah, now you're not going to be able to sell a Darren Waller for anything. And then going over to two players that did well. Y'all know Travis Etienne, my third most drafted running back in underdog drafts this year. Someone that we had as a buy low candidate through the first month of the season. We were saying that with Etienne, he was not the RB2 overall in our rankings, and instead he was a top five guy. But if you could pivot off to another player inside that top five and get someone that had already gone through their buys, such as, say, Austin Eckler, such as Tony Pollard, we would. I mean, honestly, it may look like a decent call for Eckler in a full BBR format. Pollard, not so much. And then George Kittle was something we talked about last week with and without the splits of Debo Samuel. And you know what? Let's start it off with George Kittle again because George Kittle will be a clear sell high tight end for us at this point. And let's go over and let's look at why because Kittle is a tight end that has been phenomenal, right? I mean, you were looking at Kittle as a tight end that we actually bought low on earlier in the season. And after we bought low on Kittle, you had a 90 yard receiving game. You had a three touchdown game. You had another game where you had 78 receiving yards and another game where you had 149. And what is so funny with this George Kittle overall profile with this game log is if you overlay it with the games where you've had Debo Samuel effective and healthy, you will see that George Kittle and Debo Samuel 100% have an impact on each other's performance. I mean, this is kind of a no-brainer, right? I think most people should understand this on the surface. But if you dive in and really look at this deep, you'll see that George Kittle over the past three seasons now has played seven games with no Debo Samuel in San Francisco. And in those seven games, George Kittle has averaged 22 fantasy points per game. He has had 97 receiving yards per game, and that would be on pace for over 1,600 receiving yards in a season. Whereas in the games where Debo Samuel does play, we have a sample size of 30 of those. And in that, instead of averaging 22 points per game, George Kittle is down there at about 11. Cut in half. So I want to stand by. With Kittle, he's going to be an extremely volatile player going forward. Yeah, if you look at Kittle doing nothing for a month-long stretch, we can easily say, okay, he's probably going to get better and you should probably buy him low like we did earlier in the season. But once you have this stretch of dominance, particularly in games with no Debo Samuel, where, I mean, this past week he goes out there, he has 11 targets, he has 149 receiving yards. I love it for my underdog teams, but in reality, I mean, probably something that's not realistic to expect going forward and probably a sell-high moment. Now, a tradition in these sell-high videos is I go through and talk about a player that's going to be playing on Thursday just to have the player blow up legitimately three hours after you watch the video. So the guy that we'll be talking about in this Thursday night game, ladies and gentlemen, will be DeAndre Hopkins. So mark your calendars. DeAndre Hopkins will be a top five wide receiver in the NFL this week. But I want to get out ahead of it and say, I love Will Levis. We interviewed the guy, super nice to us. Really wishing the best for Will Levis. I hope the man goes out there. I hope that he continues to crush it. But if we're going to be realistic with ourselves here, we need to look at the expectations that people that are significantly smarter than I am have with this Tennessee Titans offense with Will Levis in particular. The first thing I want to do is going to be look at the implied team totals. Now, this is going to be what Las Vegas sportsbooks are telling us is going to happen this week. And I want to reiterate, Las Vegas sportsbooks know more than you do. They know more than I do. 
And I promise you, if you are watching this video or anybody you watch on YouTube, they're not going to be consistently able to go out there and bet the Chiefs minus two and a half and be profitable over sports books. I mean, they know way more than we do. Please don't think you can, I mean, get a leg up on them. Going and looking at what they have for the implied team total for Tennessee this week. You have them scoring 17 points. The only offenses worse than Tennessee this week, according to Vegas Sportsbooks will be the Vikings, the Bears, and the Cardinals. That is how ugly things are supposed to be. If you go over and look at what we have, say, just with underdog pickums, you're going to be seeing that they have Will Levis hovering around 200 passing yards. So while Levis was phenomenal his first week in here, and while, to be completely honest with you, I'd be fine taking more than 200 passing yards for Will Levis on underdog this week. It is very difficult to sit here and project out DeAndre Hopkins to maintain a wide receiver one like he just was. I mean, this past week, he was what? I mean, a wide receiver with three receiving touchdowns off of four targets. That is the definition of what's unsustainable. Now, if I'm actually looking at the pick on underdog, I will say I probably prefer the 215 and a half total yards rather than just going with the higher than 202 and a half passing yards for Will Levis, given the fact that this is a quarterback that can go out there and run the ball. And of course, if you are taking that on underdog, and if you're new to underdog, make sure you combine that with Derrick Henry to have more than half a total yard. I'd actually be looking for a bring back of that, of Terry McLaurin for fewer than 59 and a half receiving yards. You can put $10 down to win 60 with that trio. And of course, if you want to check out those pickups over on Underdog Fantasy, if you want to get that Derrick Henry more than less than half a total yard, you can find that link in the comment section in the description. Promo good Flock will get you a 100% deposit match plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, that Derrick Henry special pick -em. But let's go ahead and let's talk about our next wide receiver. We'll be very brief because it's in the same Thursday game. So I know you're going to be tired of hearing these guys, but... George Biggins is another wide receiver that we are looking to sell. We said it with Deontay Johnson coming back in that with George Biggins, he is a player that you have to dramatically lower expectations for. Keep in mind, we had Pickens as a buy low guy back in week one when people were ranking him as a wide receiver four. But there was a massive difference in games that we have seen with and without Deontay Johnson for George Pickens. George Pickens without Deontay Johnson in those four games averaged eight and a half targets per game. Average about 90 receiving yards per game. Whereas the 20 games we have seen George Pickens play with Deontay Johnson, that has fallen down to 10 fantasy points per game, that has fallen down to 40 and a half receiving yards per game. So massive differences. And like we said, because we are including these two Thursday night guys in our sell high video, you can be damn sure that they are about to blow up on Thursday night right after you watch this. But let's go over and let's look at a teammate pairing that I had some hope for, but now I think all hope is lost. If you're looking at Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, they were possibly about to be in a win-win situation, right? At the trade deadline, maybe you had Jerry Judy get sent to Buffalo. And then, oh my gosh, we're super excited about Jerry Judy. You're excited about Cortland Sutton being the only guy getting volume here. Yada, yada, yada. Both guys get a bump. However, now you're in this spot where um, they're both stuck in this same offense. I'm seeing some people on Twitter going out there, hyping up, going, oh my gosh, look at these Russell Wilson stat lines in comparison to what we have with like, say, um, Patrick Mahomes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. If you are looking at per game stats for Russell Wilson, you're looking at a lot of games where Russell Wilson's down by three touchdowns going up against prevent defenses. Please don't think that's something we can project out going forward. And if you are looking at Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, these are wide receivers that really, I mean, have been fine this year. The issue is just the ceiling is so damn capped that I think they fall in the bucket of guys that maybe you can project out as a low end wide receiver three. They have some name value, but ultimately they're going to be touchdown or bust like Jerry Judy this week. Yes. Gets you the 50 receiving yards and the receiving touchdown. However, if we're looking at before this week, or if we're looking overall, I mean, I have the game log right here. Jerry Judy has a combined zero games with 15 or more fantasy points this year. Zero games. If we go over to Cortland Sutton, going to be a little bit different. Sutton has had, I mean, 
a tremendous amount of touchdowns. Corlin Sutton is sitting with six touchdowns off of 46 targets. I can tell you right now, this touchdown efficiency is not going to last. Now, if you're looking at his games with 15 or more points, I mean, you had the game against Green Bay. You had the game against Miami. So I guess he gave you two games with more than 15 points. But even with that being said, you will have the touchdown dramatically falling down. So I think both wide receivers, honestly, have to be guys that we're selling now that you can't say they're going to get saved with the trade. Now let's go over to what we have with Gus Edwards. With Gus Edwards, this is a running back that is a very dependent sell. If you are playing in a non-PBR format, I am completely fine with you holding him. Non-PBR league, hold Gus Edwards. Pretty much every running back there is going to be a touchdown or bust option. However, in a full PBR league, this is where I would say he just doesn't really have the receiving floor for us to go out there and be comfortable to ever start him with confidence. I understand that kind of sounds crazy, right? Because if you're looking over the past two weeks, you have, I mean, a combined 150-ish rushing touch, I mean, rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns, and about 100 receiving yards. So I know you're rolling your eyes going, come on, Mason, uh, you clown. I'm going to hold on to Gus Edwards. I'm going to keep on banking on these points. Those were games where you had the Baltimore Ravens going out there and dropping 38 and 31 points. In rea reality, I don't necessarily know if we're going to get that same type of game environment every week going forward with Gus Edwards. And my primary concern is this is still a running back that's at the end of the day, not seeing in any involvement as a pass catcher in a full PPR league. You have seven total targets on the season. This is a year where he's played eight games. So he's averaging fewer than a target per game. And in that full BBR format, if you can just pivot over to a running back like Rashad White instead, that is giving you the baseline level floor where you're getting three receptions every week. You're getting 20 receiving yards every single week. I would be much more comfortable starting a running back like Rashad White over Gus Edwards in that full PPR league. Now, going over to a running back that's in a similar mold, I actually have a lot of Kareem Hunt. Now, I'll admit to you, I do not have that much Gus Edwards in underdog drafts. I wish I did. I'd be a lot richer if I did, but it is what it is. Kareem Hunt's kind of saving us. With Kareem Hunt, over the past three weeks, we've had four touchdowns, and yeah, I, I really love it for someone we took in the last round, but in reality... If we are projecting out Kareem Hunt going forward, while it's a running back that for three straight weeks has had double-digit touches, for three straight straight weeks he has found the end zone, it's only downhill. I, I mean, you have a three-man running back by committee with Jerome Ford as well as Pierre Strong. Similar to how we are saying sell Jerome Ford a few weeks back after he was coming off the two-touchdown performance against Tennessee, we were saying, oh, okay, well, it's going to happen realistically. This is going to be a running back by committee where nobody's good enough to overcome just uh, probably not great of an offense in a three-man backfield. I think it's the same thing with Kareem Hunt. He's the guy that's been scoring touchdowns. But going forward, I mean, in reality, I'm still not going to be comfortable starting him just because the baseline floor is not really there as a receiver, right? I mean, you're averaging about 15 receiving yards per game, maybe even a little bit less than that. I mean, more so closer to about 12 receiving yards per game at this point. Now, let's move over to a wide receiver slash running back combo. Well, actually, I don't know if we want to talk about the running back here. Let's talk about the wide receiver first. With Gabe Davis, it's going to be very dependent on the price point that you can get. If you can find someone to buy in that Gabe Davis just had, I mean, his first, I mean, second game in his NFL career with 12 or more targets, and they think that all of a sudden Gabe Davis is breaking out and this is someone that we can be super comfortable about going forward. Sure, if we can sell Gabe Davis as a mid-wide receiver too, let's do it. I want to reiterate with what you have with Gabe Davis. We drafted him in a lot of underdog basketball drafts, but that's because we don't have to submit our starting lineup there. He's going to randomly spike into our starting lineup when he does have these blow-up games where he has 100 receiving yards and the receiving touchdown, where he has 87 receiving yards and the receiving touchdown. Whereas in reality, you're also going to get mixed in these other weeks where you have three receptions, you have one reception, you have two receptions, you have three receptions, you have one reception. So if you're playing in a league where you only start two wide receivers, one flex, I would rather just use Gabe Davis, the spike week that we have, package him with another running back to go get a long-term upgrade, or package him with the tight end to go get a tight end upgrade at that position. 
Like maybe a trade that we could look to make is if you potentially wanted to pivot from George Kittle and Gabe Davis in a 10 team league where you only start two wide receivers in a flex where the wide receiver depth just simply doesn't matter. And instead you want to go out there and maybe bring in uh, Mark Andrews. I think that would make a lot of sense. Now, our next player, I want to put a big asterisk on it because I could see him having a 40-point week here. Raheem Mostert is a running back that continues to crush. Raheem Mostert is a running back that has 12 total touchdowns on the season. One of the most efficient running backs in the NFL, playing in one of the best offenses in the NFL. I just want to try to talk through this with y'all and try to figure out realistic expectations for the future here with Mostert. Because, I mean, if we are looking at this running back, this is someone that is going to have Devon Achan added back into his backfield. Not this week, but, I mean, this is the last week Achan's going to be on the IR. And Raheem Bostert is already losing touches, and this is already looking a little more like a running back by committee. So I'm just a little concerned what happens if one, this turns into a three-man backfield. I would still say Mostert and Devon Achan are still top 24 running backs, right? I mean, they're just so damn good so far in this season. And then on top of that, there is the outside concern that what if Devon Achan just completely takes over? Like that is the shot where Achan has 60, 70% of the backfield. Mostert's left with 30 to 40%. So... We're projecting Mostert out rest of season. I'm going to have him more so as that mid RB2. If you could sell him as like a low end RB1, even though he's been a high end RB1 this year, probably going to look to do just that. But I think that's all I have for you, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not done so already, please go down there. Drop a like on this live stream. Subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And if you wanted to check out any of those pickums over on Underdog, like I said, my favorite combo for this week, which I also was the guy that took Jameer Gibbs for fewer than 100 yards on Monday, so don't listen to me. But Will Levis for more than 215 and a half total yards. Derrick Henry for more than half a total yard. Terry McLaurin for fewer than 59 and a half total yards. That's $10 to win 60 and yeah, also promo good flux, not only going to get you the Derrick Henry special pick em, but also 100% deposit match. Also our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. So make sure you take advantage of that. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you and really hope I get to see you out in the live stream later tonight.